the time? Is it time to start? Okay. So do we have any kids in the room? Well, kind of. Oh, yeah. Any kids over 60? So uh, then I, I think of this as a kid's song, but we're all, we're all going to enjoy this. This uh, So our joy song to open with, it's called Riding on the Train. I've been writing kids' music <coughs> for 36 years, and I kept swearing I'm going to record it someday. I finally did. And uh, so I want you guys to play along. So this is how it works. We're going to sing on the chorus. Riding on the train. Can I hear that from you? Riding on the train. And now the Oh, yeah, yeah. And then put your hand up like this, and you're going to go, woo, woo, all aboard. All aboard. Okay. And then next time we'll be riding on the train. Woo, woo, tickets, please. So ready? Riding on the train. Woo, woo, tickets, please. So uh, keep up, Vic. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, um, so we'll do that a couple of times. Then in the verses imagining we're looking out the window seeing some kind of animal out in the field now your job is to pay attention to whatever animal I pick because as soon as you hear me say that animal you will make the sound of that animal okay so if I say if we see the chickens out in the field you will immediately go yeah thank you okay so you have to pay attention right as soon as you hear the name of the animal we'll do three animals and then at the end it'll switch to riding on the train click clack click clack We'll imagine the train going softly off into the distance until we can't hear it anymore, just fading, okay? So that's your big instructions, boys and girls. Here we go. So get your boo-boos ready. Riding on the train. Woo-woo! All aboard! Riding on the train. Woo-woo! Tickets, please! Riding on the train. Woo-woo! All aboard! Riding on the train. Woo-woo! Tickets, please. As we go riding to the countryside and see those sheep out in the field, I want you sitting right here by my side. And we can squeal, everybody squeal. Woo! Riding on the train. Woo woo! All aboard! Riding on the train. Woo woo! Tickets, please. Riding on the train. Woo woo! All aboard! Riding on the train. Woo woo! Tickets, please. As we go riding through the countryside and see those chickens in the field, I want you sitting right here by my side, and we can squeal, everybody squeal. Woo! Riding on the train. Woo woo! All aboard! The train. Woo woo! Tickets, please. Riding on the train. Woo woo! All aboard! Riding on the train. Woo woo! Tickets, please. And one more animal. As we go riding to the countryside and see those dinosaurs in the field, I want you sitting right here by my side and we can squeal. Everybody squeal! Woo! Click clack, riding on the train. Click clack, 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 click clack, riding on the train. Welcome to Unity. And who says spirituality has to be serious and solemn? We have a good time. Thank you, Charlie, for bringing your joy and your music and your many gifts to us. I'm so glad to have you with us. Um, we usually have an opening prayer, and I'm going to do that. So let us just breathe in and say thank you, God, for this beautiful day, for this wonderful spiritual community which sustains us on so many levels. 
Thank you for each other and the way we become a village in order to assist and support and heal and teach. Thank you for the ways we serve our community. And thank you for everyone who is coming to us for the first time and for all of those who are watching at home. We welcome you. We embrace you. We love you. Amen. Okay, it's time for introductions. I am Carolyn. I am your uh, assist, the worship assistant today. Reverend Dahlia is not here. And it, it used, yes, <gasps> she's here. Uh-oh. I'm so glad you're here. It's so wonderful to see you, and we missed you while you're gone. And uh, yes, we love Reverend Dahlia. And so we have prayer chaplains also who are here in their stalls. Kathy. Kathy. And Brenda. Anyone else? These two are plenty. They've got prayer power to spare. And they will be up here at the front of the church to pray with you after the service. So whether you have a, a healing need or any concern, or whether you want to celebrate something that has been accomplished or overcome, these are the people to see. Their prayers are confidential and beautiful, and that loving energy will stay with you for a, a week or more. So I hope you will take advantage of that. And many of you already know that they give a call once a month to everyone in the congregation who has indicated some desire for that. And their prayers are just lovely and personal. And so you are a great blessing to us. Unity was founded on prayer, and you are living it. Thank you. Anyone here can answer any of the questions you have about unity and uh, what we stand for. And there are, if you're here for the first time, there are gifts for you in the bookstore. And uh, we just would like to make sure that you feel at home and welcome, because you are. Your life is about to change in infinitely wonderful ways. So welcome to you. And we are going to have Wyatt come forward to light the Christ candle. Wyatt, thank you for saying yes. know that the Christ spirit is always alive in us, inspiring us. Sometimes it helps to have a child remind us about that perfect innocence and love. And it's true that a child does lead us. So Wyatt, we're going to give you a special blessing before we welcome all the young people and their teachers up. Come on out where people can see you, because we love you. Together. Wyatt, you are a beautiful child of God, perfect in every way. You are loved unconditionally, just the way you are. And now if teachers, young people, would like to come forward, we're going to We're going, we're going to say this blessing for ourselves, all right? And young people, you're part of this as well, okay? And teachers, okay, together. I am a beautiful child of God, perfect in every way. I am loved unconditionally just the way I am. Now stay here while we sing the song once through, and then we'll let you go to your class. The light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This new light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This new light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This new light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, 
So it's time for our community announcements right now. And first I'd like to remind you to please turn off your cell phones so that uh, you won't be embarrassed if it goes off unexpectedly. And then first off then, I'd like to invite Patricia up to make an announcement. Thank you, Patricia. is asking for input from the congregation for our um, revising of the mission statement. That request for congregational input was first made at the town hall meeting that we had in August. Um, if someone still has not had a chance to fill it out and make your preference known, um, we're giving you, um, uh, we have forms available if you don't have one to fill out. And um, this box here is where we're putting the forms and it will be over there in the information area in the Great Hall. So we'd really appreciate it if today you could uh, fill this out and um, get this done. Um, if you really, really can't do it today, um, we have until Wednesday evening, uh, the 12th. So, um, and I'm going to explain that uh, it's a good policy to re-examine a mission statement on a regular basis. The um, Worldwide Ministry, previously known as the Association of Unity Churches, is asking churches to create uh, vision and mission statements that are in alignment with the vision statement of the Unity Worldwide Ministry. Um, so the request from um, Unity Worldwide Ministries helped guide the creation of three choices on the form. So we'd really appreciate it if you fill out that form and we can, um, it'll be our statement, our mission statement and what we prefer. So uh, if anybody needs a form, the, if you raise your hands, the ushers can uh, get one to you, okay? They have some forms available. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you want to just simply let the board of directors choose, or you're perfectly happy with the mission statement as it is, that's fine too. But we want you to be as involved as you want to be. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about Charlie Thweet, just to remind you. We're always happy to see him here. He's been coming to our church for many years, and his music is always very heartful. He is joyful. He is wise, and he really lives the message that he's giving us. So he's the real deal. He has been uh, performing professionally for many renowned people, Wayne, Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Tony Robbins, Marianne Williamson, Ram Das, Louise Hay, Reverend Dahlia. <laughs> he will have CDs available after the service here. And then he is also providing a picnic concert at 12 o'clock today. And you can buy tickets at the door. So don't worry if you didn't remember to plan ahead. You can just come on the spur of the moment and enjoy more of his music and his message and have a good time with your community. Does that sound good? Great. Oh, <laughs> um, I think it's in Vallejo, isn't it? <laughs> it's right out here in our, in our um, social hall. Thank you takes a village to give the announcements. And then we have um, Phyllis Flemings who's going to give an announcement. Good morning. And I, I am here as a reminder of what's coming up. 
I'm so excited and passionate about this. I want everybody to feel the same way. Anyway, we will start our fall reflections, previously known as our fall program. It will start on Sunday, this coming Sunday, September 16th. It will go for seven weeks, ending the week of October 28th. We have eight small groups. Some will be meeting in homes. Some will be meeting here in the church. Some at night, some during the day, no excuse. So that way you can make sure that you find one that calls to your heart. We will talk about a book by M.J. Ryan, Attitudes of Gratitude. This particular author lives here in our area, in the Bay Area, and she will be coming at the end of the program to do a talk and a workshop. Isn't that exciting? Yes, I thought so. So anyway, we will have testimonials every Sunday. Not talks, but testimonials. We will have a word that we're concentrating on. This Sunday coming up, it will be joy. We will have colors that we will wear. Sunday, it will be yellow. So we will be able to look around the congregation and see all the yellow and remember how joyful we are and remember how excited we are and remember how grateful we are. Reverend Dahlia and other ministers will be giving their talks depending on what the theme is for that Sunday. And we will make sure that we grow from this experience because every year we do this, and we've been doing it now for 20 plus years. I think I got that right there. 20 plus years. And each year when we meet and we connect with each other, we grow. We become better than who we are now. So asking that you just go to the, out in the hall there and sign up for one of these particular groups. And looking forward to us having a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Phyllis. And that reminds me that if you go to our webpage, right at the bottom, there's a, a little place you can click on the first 20 years. What you said about over 20 years reminded me. And there are pictures, music, spoken words. It is incredibly moving. I could not stop watching it. It, it just reminds us of our history, where we've been, and how we got to, to this place in consciousness and, and in this building, all the places we've been, the people who are no longer with us, those on whose shoulders we stand. It's, I encourage you to check it out. It's just wonderful. Gary Eisenberg and Warren Spaeth put it together, and they've done a wonderful job. Okay? All right. And then there's a reminder here that our one of our community action programs is about cleaning up the coast, Saturday, September 15th, from 9 a.m., to noon. Um, it's California Coastal Cleanup Day. Is that happening at Lagoon Valley? Does anybody know? Or is, okay. The effort is to make sure that no harm comes to wildlife along the route. And you know how litter and trash, and especially plastic, and those horrible plastic rings can harm our animal friends. So we make a commitment every year to help clean that up. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Alamo Creek and all, all those areas in town. Good, big. Thank you. And a reminder to please continue bringing your recyclables. Um, we raised almost $300 with your donations, and we'd like to keep that going because it's a good activity. It's important. For those of us who are concerned about our planet, it just it's a little thing to do, but it's important and it helps. It helps our church and it helps our planet. Our youth ed department is having a fundraiser with savers in the area of Nugget. I don't know if you've been there before. And so if you would bring your gently used clothing, shoes, 
linens, household items. Um, collection dates begin today and they end the 23rd. So there's a collection bin located at the end of the information table in the Great Hall. So you don't even have to go to Savers. You can just bring your items here. They will be taken to Savers and they will be transformed into support for our church. And then Reverend Dahlia is offering a workshop on Saturday, September 15th, Meditation Made Simple. And she knows how to do that. You know, she's, she's a teacher at heart, and she's a meditator and a prayer. And so if you would like to learn how to meditate simply, effectively, powerfully, this can be life-changing. That will be from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., on Saturday the 15th. There's a sign-up sheet in the Great Hall, and her workshops are always a wonderful experience. Remember that there's always more information about all of these activities on the tables outside in the Great Hall. And the final reminder is that our greeting time is a really important time to connect. And we also remember we don't want it to go on forever. But not everyone likes to hug. And so if you do not want to hug, maybe you've got a cold or you're just, you just don't do that comfortably, all you need to do is put your hands together. And that's our signal. Namaste. The Christ in me or the divine in me sees the divine, honors the divine in you. And if you want to do both, you can do that too. But we're going to enjoy some music now. And... Thank you for helping me with the announcements. Oops. So I'm filling out this goldie oldie. This is a song you may recognize called You're an Angel. Anyone ever heard this before? One person, thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'll just sing it a time or two, then we can get up. And if all you get is You're an Angel, la, 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 that's fine. You're an angel, you're a being of light, you're an angel, and I know that I'm right, you're an angel, bringing love to everyone, and it's yours to give, and in the giving comes the fun, so join in, you're an angel. You're a being of light, you're an angel, and I know that I'm right, you're an angel, bringing love to everyone, and it's yours to give, and in the giving comes the fun. So are you ready to greet some angels? So have a foot on your feet, and go around and greet some friends. Keep singing if you like. You're an angel. You're a being of light. You're an angel. And I know that I'm right. You're an angel. Bringing love to everyone. And it's yours to give. And in the giving comes the fun. Being a light, and Larry Fagley, Larry Fagley is a being of light, and Heidi Thweet, Heidi Thweet's a being of light, and it's ours to give, and in the giving comes the fun. You're an angel. Yours to give, and in the 
You know, being a, a worship assistant is so wonderful. What a gift. And this is the most difficult part of it. It's a wonderful challenge to have, but getting you all back in your seats, I, that's just love spilling over, overflowing. I want to remind you that we're, we have a really important World Day of Prayer coming up. And that is going to be 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. this Thursday, right here. And it's going to be led by our prayer chaplains. There will be um, a short prayer and then time of silence. And this is powerful. People are praying on this World Day of Prayer internationally. And those that energy combined gives each one of our prayers a special impetus, a special depth. And so it's a, a great opportunity to come and uh, you can fill out a prayer slip and, and those will all be sent to Unity Village where someone prays 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I hope you can come. You can stay as long as you like. You can come for half an hour. You can come for hours. And that's this Thursday right here starting at 11 a.m. Okay, hope to see many of you there. Now it's time for our statement of faith. Let's take a breath. Sometimes when we do things over and over the same words, they can lose their impact until we're reminded that this is an essential truth of our faith that no matter what is occurring on the surface of our lives, there is only God, and God is infinitely good. So let's make this statement together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good.
orientation. There will be no animal sounds involved. So what I'm going to do is we'll, uh, we'll do the song, Eyes Closed. There'll be a place you can add your voice. Eventually you'll fade into silence. We'll be in that silence for a minute or so. And after that I'll lead you through a little guided meditation. Okay, so let's close our eyes. Take a deep breath in.
so simple. Just close our eyes, sit in silence, and reach out to God. situation. As we look out of our eyes into this world, it doesn't matter so much what we're looking at as where we're looking from. It doesn't matter so much what we're looking at as where we're looking from. And we can remember to look from spirit.
speak the truth and tell me what you're feeling. Just speak the truth with kindness in your heart. Just speak the truth when things come up for healing. Just speak the truth and show me who you are. Show me who you are. Show me who you are. Take a crack at singing that. I know it's a lot of words. If you just get that one line, that's okay. Just speak the truth and tell me what you're feeling. Just speak the truth with kindness in your heart. Just speak the truth when things come up for healing. Just speak the truth and show me who you are. Show me who you are. Show me who you are When your day isn't going Quite the way you planned And you watch as your peace Just deserts you Then it's time to step up So your heart can make a stand And just let your friends know If they've hurt you Just speak the truth And tell me what you're feeling just speak the truth with kindness in your heart. Just speak the truth when things come up for healing. Just speak the truth and show me who you are. Show me who you are. Show me who you are. When, if I didn't love you, then I would not be led to ask for the things that are missing and it's not always easy to say what must be said it takes courage to ask you to listen just speak the truth and tell me what you're feeling just speak the truth with kindness in your heart just speak the truth when things come up for healing, just speak the truth and show me who you are. Show me who you are. Show me who you are. When my day isn't going quite the way I planned, and I watch as my peace just deserts me, then it's time to step up so my heart can make a stand. I just let my friends know if they've hurt me. Just speak the truth and tell me what you're feeling. Just speak the truth with kindness in your heart. Just speak the truth when things come up for healing. Just speak the truth and show me who we are. Show me who we are. Show me who we are, 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 show me who we are. Thank you. Be back here. Hang on a second. I was looking at my calendar. It's been two and a half years. Can you believe that? It's February of 16. That's nuts. So, uh, anyway, I'm back. I'm glad to be here. Isn't that wild? Time flies. Someone reminded me at the first service that time is like a roll of toilet paper. Have you heard that one? You know, when you first put it on, it seems like it, it's going to go forever. And you get near the end of the roll, it's like, ooh, it goes so fast. <laughs> I kind of life is kind of like that, huh? So, um, well, my talk today is stepping back on the path, subtitled "Conversations with St. Francis." And uh, I've had the, uh, you know, St. Francis is from Assisi, right? You know, St. Francis of Assisi. And uh, I've had the great honor and pleasure to uh, go to Assisi probably nine times in the last seven and a half years. And uh, I've had some experiences of sitting in his, uh, the area of his tomb. It's a chapel. 
and sometimes I'll, I'll hear him speaking to me. And it's kind of impactful, and I write down these little messages. So at certain points in the talk, I'm going to uh, share a few of the things that he said to me. Um, I do like opening a service with a joke, so, um, so I have a new joke for you. And this, it's about a monk, so it's kind of in the theme. So uh, forgive me if you've heard this before. But um, so it's a young monk. He's just decided to join this order. And uh, so he's new at it. He's a novice. And the, uh, one of the rules of this particular order is that you're in silence all the time. So you're not, it's just in silence all year. Except once a year, you're allowed to go in and say two words to the head abbot. So you know, he joins the order and the whole year passes by. And he walks into the office and now it's time to say his two words. And he looks at the abbot and he says, bed hard. Bed hard. He says, well, okay, thank you. And so he goes another year. He does his year in silence, comes in again to the abbot's office, and now it's time for his two words. He looks at the abbot and he says, food bad. <laughs> okay, thank you for sharing. Uh, does another year in silence, comes back in the third time. He says, you may now speak your two words. And he looks at the abbot and says, I quit. <laughs> Yeah, but looks back at him and says, you know, I'm not surprised. All you've done since coming here is complain. <laughs> okay. So stepping back on the path. And that's, I think that's something that we're always doing, aren't we, in our lives? It's like, it's always this process of forgetting and remembering, you know. We get a little off course and we'll come back, come back home to who we are, come back to that heart place, and we forget again, no, 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 come back home, get, you know, just keep getting back on that path in our lives, but it's not so much a back and forth as what I think it's more of, some people call a spiral curriculum, it's, you're going back around and, and then back to where you are, but the whole time it's, you're elevating and, and expanding who you are, you know, even though it looks like you're just, you know, forgetting and remembering, we're always taking in more and growing in who we are, you know, as spiritual beings. It's not, you know, that coming home is also not linear. It's not like, you know, this long process and eventually you get home. It's always that, you know, you get a little bit lost, come back home. A little bit lost, come back home, step your back on the path. And there's a way that St. Francis did this. He, you know, he was, you probably know, he was raised the son of a fairly wealthy merchant. Uh, you may not know, he ended up being conscripted, going off to war, and just getting, war just totally rattled him. He, he came back so confused and crazy. And at some point, you know, he's in his early 20s, he wanders off the edge of town. He, Assisi is this kind of uh, hilltop medieval village. So, you know, it's always about building on top of a hill to defend against other invaders. But down the hill, he went to this little chapel called San Damiano, and that's, we would say, St. Damien's. And this was a place that was in rubble. You know, the walls had, some of the walls had fallen down, and uh, and he looked inside the chapel, and there on this crucifix was kind of at an angle and you know, out of place. There was the, this medieval painting of Jesus. So this is around the year 1200, so it's way back. And, and he sees this, this crucifix of Jesus, and then Jesus speaks to him. And he hears these words from Jesus. The words that came, rebuild my church. And he took it literally. He actually came back down and brought some mortar, and he started putting the the bricks back in place, the stones back in place, and it's a, it's a place I've visited many times, it's kind of fun to just put my hand on the wall and know, St. Francis touched this stone, isn't that interesting? So in, in a bigger way, as his ministry increased, he, it was a more political way that he rebuilt the church, had a bigger influence on rebuilding how the church was approaching things, and moving it to this next level of awareness and growth. So rebuild my church. I think sometimes God is calling us you know, off the path, come back to rebuild our church. You know, sometimes we may find our lives in a little bit of rubble. Could you experience that? And sometimes, you know, well, we got to, let's rebuild this church. You know, come back, step back on the path, re reignite. It's like the prodigal son. The father doesn't care. It's just the fact he's back. That's all that matters. You know, welcome back home to who we are. Maybe it feels like it's in rubble. Rebuild my church. 
So uh, what I want to look at is using these quotes from St. Francis as ways that we step back on the path. I'm going to look at three simple levels. One is in our connection with ourself, our journey. Uh, the second one I'm going to look at is a connection with each other, you know, connection with others. And then finally, connection with God. So I want to just look at these various things and uh, bring in some of these quotes. Well, I want to, there's one other thing I have in note here. that I would say that St. Francis's message if you put it simply, you might say it's to love, to live simply, to serve, to inspire each other. And a, a quote that I found of something St. Francis actually said, uh, this is beautiful. He said, always preach, sometimes with words. Isn't that beautiful? Always preach, sometimes with words. And probably some of my biggest learnings have not been from words at all as much as just watching how someone else is living their life. You know, sometimes people's energy just elevates you. It's almost like they are the tide bringing you up. Have you had that experience? You know, it's, it's, it's who we're with and how they're being, not necessarily what words they're saying. Always preach, sometimes with words. So I want to look at, um, first, the level of self. You know, and when I, uh, here's the quote that, that I think applies to that. I heard these, and this is over a period of different years, you know, different years I was sitting there, and occasionally I would hear the voice of St. Francis. Um, he said, be simple in your love, be humble in your life, be gentle in your giving, be true to yourself. In these and all your ways, you know that Spirit walks with you. In these and all your ways, you know that Spirit walks with you. You know, I, I want to mention that when I first uh, came to the Basilica of St. Francis, it's a big cathedral uh, in this kind of small town. And I remember standing outside and looking up at it, you know, this is the marble and travertine and, you know, limestone. And, and uh, I got this feeling that it occurred to me, you know, for me, Jesus was the top guy, right? I grew up in a basic Christian home, and, and I wasn't Catholic, so for me, the next guy down really was kind of St. Francis. And you, know, you can't go visit Jesus' tomb, but here are the remains of St. Francis sitting right here. And it's like, wow, to be able to be in this spot. And I, I got the sense that over the centuries, so many people have come here and felt this love for St. Francis that I felt like I could feel it anchored in this spot, like it was palpable to, to come to this place. So it's really uh, felt like holy ground in a big way. And uh, so what I do is you enter in, go through a main sanctuary, and then down these little stairs. And, and the lower level is where the tomb is. And it's very simple. There's nothing ornate about it at all, just a, a few rows of, of a seating and then a stone altar uh, and then a stone casket where his remains are. And if you think about it, you know, each of us, we're walking around with this set of bones, right, in us. And... These bones have been living with us for decades, and whatever our soul's vibration, these bones are absorbing. And so here I am in the presence of, of St. Francis' bones, and whatever energy he put out, I feel like maybe they're still vibrating you know, with that energy. And I've just I've found such a deep, still peace in that place. So um, so in, as far as the, I'm going to come back, as far as connection with self, um, one word that comes to me is integrity. I know sometimes when I hear the word integrity, I go into fear or guilt or something, but it's like, oh, am I being a good boy or something? And, but there's another level of how to look at integrity. Like, are you being integrity with your dreams? Are you being integrity with your soul's purpose? And you know, what was it God gave you to do in this life? And are you, are you aligning with that? And I think that's a great phrase. Are you in integrity with your dreams? with what God gave you to do. So one of my dreams growing up, I always knew that I wanted to be a dad. I knew that I was, I, I yearned for that to be a part of my life as I grew up and hoped that it would come true, and eventually it did. And uh, so many years ago, this, I want to tell you a story about when my son was born, and this, this happened when he was one day old. So he was born at midnight, so come down around 24 more hours, and now here we are in the middle of the night, and my son Jeremy cannot stop crying. And uh, so I've, I've never done this before. I've never been a dad before. What do I do? And so it's, it was time to pull something new out of me, right? You know, what, 
what part of me is going to show up, learn, and grow to deal with the situation? So I, I like to call it my first night on daddy duty. So that was my first night on daddy duty. And here I am with this crying boy. While I'm walking around in the dark like, what do I do? What do I do? And, uh, and it occurred to me that when I was young, it was always very soothing to me when my mother would hum. So I thought, okay, well, I'll hum. Maybe that will help. And I'm walking around. Mm -hmm. And just whatever melody came to me. And he started to kind of calm down a little bit. And I kept humming. And, and then it became this little melody that was kind of, you know, recycling and actually became something concise. And, and then after a few more minutes, I started to have words that came. And a little four-line ditty. And I held your head when you were tired. And it became the song, and, and now I'm thinking, well, I don't want to forget this song, and here I am in the dark, so now I'm going to hold him with one hand and reach around and try and find something to record it into so I don't lose it, and, and then back to two hands again, and, and, uh, and so that, that showed up out of me for that situation, so part of me had to grow as I know myself more deeply in whatever life you know, serves up, so, uh, and it worked. Now, a little side note to the story is that 12 years later, I finally recorded that song, and I invited my son to join me and sing on it. So who could have guessed, you know, that night, that 12 years later, we'd be in the studio recording the song. So that's just a kind of a fun twist to it all. But connection with self. What are your dreams? Are you in integrity with your dreams and ready to draw more from you? I'm going to read that quote one more time. Be simple in your love. Be humble in your life. Be gentle in your giving. Be true to yourself. In these and all your ways, you know that Spirit walks with you. And Spirit did walk with me that night. The answer came from within me. And that was so, it was soothing to me. What a gift. The second area is connection with others. You know, how do we, you know, you can't really, you know, we talk about oneness, right? You know, the name on the building is unity. It's, it's about oneness. But you can't really be, you know, one by yourself in a way. You kind of need to be one with somebody, right? You're not going to find oneness in a book. You know, it's it's really about, you know, Jesus said wherever two or more are gathered together. And for me, that's about how the energy arcs between us, where we where we see our connection, where we see that. So, uh, and I want to read the quote that I think applies to this. Um, Take your moments and make your moments like jewels in the crown of life. And I probably feel that way the most when I'm connecting with others. You know, these, these are the moments I remember is where, where love was exchanged. And there's a story where that happened for me, um, where I think it's a great example of this. And this happens when, it happened to happen when I was uh, traveling around various parts of Europe. And uh, I was in Innsbruck, Austria. And having as one of the small little hotels, and and all the hotels over there, they have the breakfast included. So I'm down in the breakfast room that morning, and I'm sitting at my table, just you know, having a croissant and a little bit of yogurt, and um, and I remember noticing the table behind me. There was a couple sitting there, and I overheard they're speaking in German. Oh, that's nice. And then over to my left, I heard another couple, and they're speaking in Spanish. Well, but it's kind of fun, just you know, people from all around the world. And a few minutes later, the young lady who worked behind the desk at the hotel, she came over to the Spanish-speaking couple, and she started uh, attempting to communicate something about their bill, and she only spoke German, they only spoke Spanish, they were just going, oh, yeah, yeah. they couldn't figure out what to do, and, and I remember thinking, well, I thought, well, you know, I'll bet the Germans speak English, so I said, hey, do you guys speak English? I said, yeah, and I said, well, how about ask the girl what she's trying to say in German, then you tell me in English, and I'll tell them in Spanish, because I speak Spanish. And it worked. <laughs> and, and suddenly the whole room was woven together. And what had been just these, you know, all these separate tables became like a sense of family. You know, one of those special moments of just, and all it takes is reaching out and just kind of being a little bit more awake to what's possible. You take your moments and make your moments like jewels in the crown of life. Really open to how we're, we're all connected. And I just... I, I like to get on an elevator and pretend like these are my sisters I'm standing next to. Just, just start talking to them like I know them. And just, or, you know, maybe it's just 10 seconds and you never see them again. Just, just have a good time. 
And then finally, uh, I want to look at connection to the divine, to God, and how we can deepen that in this, you know, coming and going, this coming back home. Um, you know, sometimes the experience of God is very inner. Sometimes it's very outer, like in nature. But um, let me read the, the quote. And this is, I think, probably the one that touched me the most. One of the years I was there, I heard these words. So, you know, we always we want to put St. Francis on a pedestal sometimes. You know, he's a saint. I can never live up to that. I loved what he said to me. Listen to these words. He said, all I did was line up with God. I'm a man like any other. All I did was line up with God. To me, that's just another invitation. Just keep coming back home. Just, you know, you got off the path a little. Just come home. Just keep coming back home. Um... You know, so when I, my experience of connecting with God, most, one of the things that comes to my mind frequently is when I, I need help. You know, God, what would you have me do? Is that a, that's a phrase I've used many times over the years. God, what would you have me do in this situation? Or sometimes it's just help. You know, help. What do I do? And there, there's a time uh, many years ago I was living with a girlfriend in, in uh, Houston, and uh, we were you know, going to Unity there, and, and we... Uh, we felt we had been visiting uh, the San Diego area and found it seemed like there was a lot of work there for us, like it was our next step in our journey. And so we drove to San Diego, uh, deciding that we would be moving there, and we spent about a week looking for a place to live. And we just felt like we were hitting a wall constantly, like nothing was flowing. It's like it's, it's not happening. Like, what's going on? And, and it just didn't really come together. And it was our last morning there before we were going to get back in the car and drive back to Texas. And... And it was, uh, you know, you know, the kind of half awake, half asleep state before you're really woken up. Well, I was just lying there, not quite awake, and I heard this voice. And I guess this is a, this is a story. Today is a morning of me talking about hearing voices. So. <laughs> but uh, that was probably the first time I heard a voice, and it was pretty. It was, it was just clear as a bell, and there's like an angel whispering in my ear, and the, and the voice said, "Maureen has a listing for you." And Maureen was this uh, person we had met, you know, in our in our time there in San Diego. She was a, tr a, uh, a real estate agent, and we thought, well, and I thought, oh my God, I heard a voice. Maureen has a listing for us, and well, well let's call her. You know, it's a little bit later in the morning, and so we did. And and Maureen, I heard this voice and said, you have a listing for us. And, <laughs> so, so she uh, she uh, said, well. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I am a real estate agent, but I just, I sell high-end condos to millionaires and movie stars. I mean, I don't have a rental for you. And we, I get, oh, well, okay, thank you. And oh, well. And so we got in our car and went back to Texas. And about a week later, I'm sitting there in Houston going, you just, you don't hear a voice and have it be for nothing. And there's got to be something here. So I got to call Maureen. So I called her up and, and I said, Maureen, you know, has anything changed? I mean, I heard this voice. She said, well, interesting you called. I just decided to move out of the condo that I'm renting, and it sounds like it'd be perfect for what you want. And, uh, and we ended up renting the condo, so it worked. <laughs> Maureen did have a listing for us. <laughs> just not the way we thought. So, I mean, you never know. It's, and, I, and it was all about, you know, God, how's this going to work out? We're doing a lot of asking, you know, please show me something. So in, in all these ways, you know, connection with self, with others, with, you know, what's our next step, asking God. There are all these ways just remembering to come back on the path, keep stacking back on the path, keep coming home to who we are. I wrote a song some years ago. There's the, the lyric to, it's a momentary choice, and I'm going through it constantly. Remembering which voice will bring my joy to me. So always listen for that voice, the, the true voice, the one that brings us home. The one that reminds us to make each moment like a jewel in the crown of life. Thank you. God bless.
I'm sure that many of you have the experience of getting into that very self-critical space, you know, thinking, oh, here I am again. Am I ever going to learn? So it really a, an important reminder that integrity is all about coming home to ourselves. And we know how to do that. And we also know how to rebuild our church, don't we? Over and over again. So very timely, Charlie. Thank you very much. Let's join together in blessing our tithes and offerings. And you at home, we appreciate and welcome your support as well. There's a little donate button on our website if you would like to uh, make use of that. We would welcome that. And so in a heart filled with gratitude, let's speak these words knowing that we truly mean them together. God's love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am and have, all that I give and receive. I am grateful. tell you a quick story of how this song came to be. I was uh, in Florence, Italy, and uh, I go to Italy a lot. Have you figured that out yet? <laughs> I'm doing a trip in April if you'd like to come along and spend three days in Assisi with me. There's, there are flyers out there. Who would like to come to Italy with me? Okay. It's easy. You just pay money. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm walking through Florence. I, I'm on a little free time. I gave people free time, and I'm, so I'm alone. There's a young couple, like 23 years old, and they just start playing some instrumental music. He's on guitar, she's on violin. And I have this thought, what if I just jumped in and just started singing whatever came to me? Just add a third voice, just street music, you know, baby. And, and uh, I decide not to do that. And, uh, but I did go lean against a wall and sing into my phone what I might have sung then. And it was like this pure download of an entire song. And, and uh, I think I changed five words before I recorded it. It's just like, boom. So it's called You Find It Here, and there'll be a place for you to sing if you like. When you find yourself before the dawn, seeking love in so many ways, though you thought that it was gone, it is here to stay. I know, I know, I know. 
I find it here. to the uh, picnic in the fellowship hall concert. Uh, I think we're going to just go straight through. It's like 1 to 12 to 1.30. And uh, keep you singing. And I never know what song is coming next. I also, not being here in two and a half years, I have to make some announcements here. Um, I'm doing a new thing where you get, my, if you're going digital with your music, you can get me on thumb drive at humongously deep discounts. Like everything I've ever done for $50. And that's 17 discs. Um, or there's a cheaper one, like my last latest, latest 90 for $40. Uh, I mentioned finally recording my kids' music, so this is new this year, Riding on the Train. Woo-woo! Uh, my wife Heidi says that this is going to be my biggest seller because of all the grandmas. They're going to want this. So, so if you want to take this home, help make her dream come true. Um, my latest regular CD, uh, called Letting It Fly, and you heard... Uh, just speak the truth off of this one. Uh, I just did two off of this this CD, which I also made since the last time I saw you. You heard, uh, you find it here, and then the one for the meditation, sitting here in silence. I'm also on, I have a concert video. If you're not going to stay for this, take me home on a DVD and watch me on your TV. And uh, lastly, uh, if you want to come uh, spend time with me in Italy, there's a flyer out there with a with green lettering. It says April of next year. Read the details. You'd be amazed how cheaply you can be there for almost two weeks. Three days of that will be in a CC and, and go all around. That's it. That's, that's, that's all I've been doing. So thank you for allowing this infomercial, and I hand it back over to uh, Carolyn. Thank you. God bless you. You've given us such a lot this morning. Um, I found myself thinking, Boy, I wish I was him. And then I remember my, my wisest teacher in high school said, Carolyn, there's only one thing in the world you can do better than anything else, and that's be Carolyn Ranch. And isn't that true for each one of us? Keep coming home, being our true selves, and this community supports us wholeheartedly in doing this. We are loved here for exactly who we are. And so thank you, God, for every opportunity to love, to cherish, to learn and grow, to sustain this unfolding in knowing who we are and being who we are, coming home to ourselves over and over again. Amen. Amen. Let's join together for our peace song. So I, I have a quick question for Vic. I have a quick question for you, Vic. So in the morning, when you and your wife are getting ready for church, do you say something like, is Carolyn Ranch dressing? So we're, gonna, we're going a cappella. The trick is to start low. Here we go. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace. 
peace that was meant to be with God as creator family all are we now we walk with each other in perfect harmony now peace begins with me yes this is the moment now with every step i take let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally now there is peace on earth and yes it begins with me surrounds us the love of god enfolds us the power of god protects us and the presence of god watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. We are one holy family. We celebrate our oneness and honor our diversity.